the real spark for that book came when I'd been over at the Pendleton Roundup with my dad. And on the way back on the bus, going down the Columbia Gorge toward Portland, there was a big scene up in front of us, and they stopped uh, the bus, and there were cop cars and ambulances, and the bus driver got out and asked this, uh, I think it was a construction worker, that was walking along and talking to people, because they were in the process of building the dam, the first big dam on the Columbia, which wiped out Celilo Falls, and which was where I had been watching ever since I was a kid, watching the Indians get out there on the rocks and scoop and stick those big salmon. And the guy says, oh, some drunk Indian got out in the road with a knife in his teeth and ran right straight into the grill of one of our trucks. And it's so perfect seeing this big line of people and over here, this construction job going on, building the dam, and the story that this Indian took on modern American machine head on with a knife in his mouth. And, and from that, I gradually expanded it into the cuckoo's nest idea. I had to uh, report for the draft up here. Uh, and I'd also put in an application for a, a scholarship to Stanford. And I had dislocated my shoulder in wrestling not long before that. So I let my arm hang. There was a big gap there in the x-rays. And the guy had taken the x-rays, looked at the stuff, and he says, you don't really want to go on the service to you. I said, no. My life just took a turn and headed down uh, to the Bay Area. And we were living with a bunch of other grad students in a little, little area there. And uh, Vic Lovell was part of the drug experiment and that was going on at the Menlo Park Hospital. And he got me to sit in for him. And finally, I became one of the regular guinea pigs. And they took me in to give me this, these drugs that was on the ward and put me in a nice little room that was locked, a little tiny window here with the chicken wire glass on it, and gave me this stuff. And we did it for like eight weeks. I got 20 bucks every Tuesday. And I started looking out at those guys through this little chicken wire window, and I saw that the doctors were unaware of something, that the nuts knew quite well, and that Part of it was the fact that all this Freudian stuff is baloney. That these guys were in there not because of something that happened to them in their bathroom when they were six. They were there because something had happened to them in their adult life. The stuff that really made me see the hard side of it in uh, the cuckoo's nest fashion was a stuff called, uh, it was IT-290, and there was Ditran, but mescaline itself. Mescaline, when you take mescaline, you begin to see Indian uh, blankets in your mind. You realize this is something to do with not only America today, but with America a thousand years ago. After I was finished with the experiments, I came back and got a job as an aide. I was put on that very same ward and worked nights there for uh, nine months. And in the course of the working, I was able to write that book almost all on the ward. Nurses would come by and say, oh, Mr. Kesey, you're typing up your reports again. I'm so proud of you. And I, I, I didn't tell them that what I was doing was uh, not only writing about these guys in twisted uh, uh, consciousnesses, but I had joined the, the ranks of the twisted conscious. But, but then it was doing stuff that I had not to be doing. But I knew that I was seeing something really peculiarly American and tragic and glorious at the same time. And so that book really just kind of wrote itself.